Hey, what's up, guys? In this video, we are going to be talking about Ableton Live 10's Echo. And you might be thinking, why does Ableton need another delay device? I'm going to show you why, and I'm going to tell you why it's really special and fun to use, and the possibilities are pretty endless. So let's uh, crack open this. We have just a basic idea here. Two loops. What we're going to be focusing on is this hi-hat uh, shaker tambourine sort of situation so we're gonna be going through like order of you know no particular order i guess so ableton has four delays now right we have our simple delay which is a simple delay uh, a basic stereo delay you can have it uh, synced to the host and a number of uh, uh, divisions you can have your time also so it's you get like a slapback sort of thing Stereo it, you can also link them, which is pretty neat. That's all well and good. Delays are very useful, even as a utility, which gives me ideas for a new video. We have here ping pong delay. Now, ping pong delay is basically, you know, the same thing, but the delay, the delayed signal from the right bounces to the left and then back and that just kind of ping pongs back and forth to the left and right. And I really love ping pong delays. They are fantastic. They add a lot of movement. Um, they're great on like trans leads and a bunch of stuff. P uh, ping pong delays are pretty awesome. Right, they add just, they just widen things out, which is pretty cool. This uh, one, however, um, has a filter. So you can filter the wet signal. Right? And that is a common technique for the uh the the, the delayed signal through the mixer. You would uh low pass and high pass. And what that would do is that wouldn't muddy up the lows, but it would also uh not make the highs too busy, but you still have the sound. It just kind of fills up that mid-range. That sounds pretty good. And this is, uh, I guess, effects processing, like processing the actual effects. Uh, but yeah, that is that. And then we have something really cool, which I don't use nearly as much as I should, but it's a filter delay, which is the same kind of situation as a simple delay, but uh, it's kind of split up into the three bands, and you can have like a separate filter and uh, feedback and pan for... Um, the left, the right, and then the left and right, and uh, different delay times. So it's kind of like a, a multi-band, um, not a multi-band, like a, it's kind of like you, you take, say, a simple delay, and then you group it, and then you duplicate it. This one goes to the left, this one goes to the right. And then this one up here will be center. And uh, yeah, it sounds it sounds pretty cool. There's a lot of movement, and then like each each of these will have its own effect. You have it maximum wet. It's a uh, it's just a, a very compact way of going about things. I however I don't use the filter delay as much as I should, but it's actually pretty cool now that I think of it. Um, they need more little things like this. They don't do it nearly enough. But here we are. We have the echo, which is brand new and pretty cool. And what makes it special is it is right right off the bat. I'll tell you. I'll tell you why it's special. So I'm just gonna plop those open. These two guys right here. Do you notice anything about these guys? That's right. You can't set dotted uh, or triplet, right? So now you can set dotted notes and triplet notes in. Uh, Ableton for a really nice tape echo. So just wanted to point that out. It's actually pretty cool. Cool thing about tape echo is it actually emulates tape. So you have the uh, the record head and then soon after is the play head and you know it'll you know record a sound onto it and then play it soon after. And uh, if you set up a mixer with uh, send returns in a creative way, you can get these really cool, uh, tape delays. Um, if you look up uh, 
tape delay on uh, YouTube. There's a guy, he, he sets up a guitar effect, and it's pretty cool. And he uses uh, just a simple uh, tape machine, and it sounds really neat. And uh, this was done in reggae. Uh, this was done in 50s uh, rock music, rockabilly music. It was something with a very fast um, uh, slapback echo, just to add something special. Uh, they would put it on the whole mix. It's pretty neat. And uh, yeah, it's just one of those really cool things. So another thing that makes this special uh, is, I haven't said this enough, it actually emulates tape. So with three pitch selection here, you can actually, uh, we will just uh, link these and set them both to time. You can actually do like these weird tape slowdown effects. Right, so it's like you're, you're stretching the tape by changing the delay time. Right, and of course you can turn that off. Right, and it sounds okay, I guess, but uh, yeah. That is tape. Another cool thing about tape is tape is non, it's like non-linear in its uh, frequency response. Tape, you know, has something called tape bump. You can actually select the the EQ, not the EQ, but the the high pass and the low pass filters to get like a really neat kind of tape sound. You can do some tape bump and things like that. That's actually pretty cool. And uh, all of that sort of thing. It has a built-in reverb as well. All right, let's just uh, move that to sync. Those both set to notes, so I'll have one eighth and one sixteenth, okay. pretty cool. So the cool thing about echo and tape in general is the actual like delay time uh, can be modulated so it can you can have some movement and that's with the modulation section here. If we could modulate the delay to give some movement, uh, you can sync it and invert the phase for the left and the right. It's pretty cool in my opinion and uh things like that and yeah it's just a it's just a joy to work with it just it's an it's a way to make it not sound like a boring delay like there's some there's something in it which is like all these different things that are stacked up that uh you know like difference in pitch it's slowing down speeding up you can get some really powerful situations in there uh which you know i haven't gotten into wobble right so the tape machines, you know, depending on what was going on and their quality, they tended to like slow and speed up. It's tape wobble or flux, I think it's called. And uh, that's actually a sought after um, effect, um, contributing effect, because it's like a bunch of different um, uh, nonlinearities that make up that sound, right? And there's still... There's still the story of uh, Andrew Schleps, 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 um, where he's just like, I mix in the box, but the people that I mix for, um, they're happy to spend like thousands of dollars on tape just because of, for some reason, tape is just one of those things that, you know, anyway, that's, that's a whole different uh, topic. Tape also has noise. And you can have some noise in your tape, like hiss, things like that. You can morph it. Here's something really cool, the gate. So you can have it set up so that the the delay only receives the uh, like the echo, so to speak, when the audio gets to a certain uh, peak. So we can have this have a bit more like movement to bring that down. We'll, we'll turn it all the way wet so we can hear it. All right, so nothing is going on. Let's bring the threshold down. I love that. It's amazing to me. All right, things like that. And you can also have some ducking, which will 
kind of kind of the opposite. Uh, so when things like go over a certain threshold, uh, the 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 wet signal will kind of reduce. What that does is that kind of uh, saves you some some clarity of the sound if you has a if you have like a busy uh, uh, track going on. And uh, yeah, it's kind of like just think of that as like side chaining. So sending this into like a separate channel with uh, the echo all the way, and then having the uh, a compressor post with side chain, you get the idea. Um, yeah, just it has built in uh, reverb with pre post and feedback. I'm not gonna tell you what feedback does because I don't know what it does. Apparently, it's pretty dangerous. It can do some weird stuff. And what are these guys here? I keep on looking at this. So yeah, we can clip the dry signal. We can just input like, like cook it. So we get tape saturation or Ableton's version of tape saturation. So we can use this as a, as a, uh, a, a processor of some sorts, just to add a little bit of tape uh, saturation. So I'm going to show you um, just some of its, uh, just briefly, some of its, uh, processing um, abilities you wouldn't use it for like echo or delay lines you'd use it for processing so let's uh, go all the way wet get these set to time bring them to one millisecond and uh, yeah one millisecond is fine or whatever so all right so we have our situation there i'm going to clip dry and then input Right, so we got some tape saturation there. Just as an example, uh, what we can do here is we can can have this both set to time, one millisecond, unlinked. We can actually offset the left or the right from each other. Right, and that is the has effect. It sounds a little weird because we have the filter going on here. Invert the feedback, which won't do anything because the feedback is set to that. And we can enhance the stereo, give us more stereo width. Or we can increase the reverb too. The simple uh, decay setting. So I actually like this reverb. I don't think that it's it's in the... Uh, the conventional Ableton reverb. Um, I'm not sure what it is, but it does sound pretty cool. So yeah, we can probably just use that by having these both set to 1-1. One, one. So from here, what we can do is uh, increase the feedback and we'll get like some sort of coursing effect. No, sorry, phasing effect. Right, just adjusting uh, the time, and you can do some cool stuff with modulation. So you got tape phasing, which is pretty freaking cool in my opinion. You can do all sorts of stuff. Yeah, just a, a very robust Ableton device. And if you have an Ableton device, then it's, you know, you know it's pretty uh, good on, you know, mixing and matching. You can put stuff in, uh, you know, multi-band it. You can have, like, parallel tape echoes. You can do some really cool, like, extreme feedback situations and descents. You can do all sorts of stuff. Um... Yeah, that's uh, Ableton Live's Tape Echo. So, there you have it. Um, I guess the fourth uh, Ableton delay device was a necessity. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think of Echo and other kind of tricks and stuff that you like to do with it. Uh, consider supporting me on Patreon. 
checking things in the description and uh, things of that nature. All right, hope you guys enjoyed. Take care and have a good one.